All right, we're here with the We Make Supplements podcast, episode two. Today we have Mike Shulo joining us. Mike, say hello. Hey. Hello. <laughs> we took a break from Sean. He's out traveling right now. And uh, so Mike is our creative director over at SDC Nutrition. Mike, how long have you been in the industry? Long time. I think like 15 years going on. 15 years. Yeah, I'm old. Where did you start? Started at a little place in Oakmont, PA called... Uh, ATF Fitness Products. ATF Fitness Products. I remember those guys. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, where'd you where'd you go next? Uh, I was there for a long time, and then I moved on to Reaction Nutrition. Okay. And they have merged with SDC, so here I am. Here you are. I've known Mike since 2012 when we first met at, at Reaction Nutrition. That's right. And uh, Mike was like, oh my God, there's someone else here who speaks Adobe. <laughs> <laughs> That's we true. were shocked. <laughs> yeah, right. The two graphic designers. Everyone looked at me like I was an alien all the time. <laughs> Coming together, knowing what vector uh -huh. fonts are yeah. and vector art, it was crazy. Yeah, I was like, whoa. So today's first topic is going to be about graphic design, yeah. package design, and who better than you and me to talk about this, right? We've been in the industry for uh, eight years for myself mm -hmm. and uh, you know, 15 years for you and long yeah. enough to almost have a couple babies. <laughs> a couple. <laughs> you, have, you have a few of your own, so yep. it's all good. So, um, I mean, I, I think the first place to start is, do you like how where package design has gone in the past 15 years? Oh, my God, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, oh, yeah. It used to be so gaudy and weird. You don't think the OG packages were, like, sexy? <laughs> they were, They were. you know, they had their place, I think. You know? I remember there'd be all these bodybuilding uh, oh. guys, right? And they would put their whole body on yep. the front oh, of the Oh, my label. God, I remember. I think some people still do that. Oh, yeah. I think 97 called and wants their like Zuba pants back. <laughs> what do you think the biggest change has been over 15 years? Uh, just it's gotten a lot cleaner. It's gotten a lot cleaner. more uh, like uh, I think easier to understand what you're looking at. It's a, it's more of a clean, clean slate. When you look at it, it looks, uh, you know, like the Apple box. It's amazing. You know, you see it. It looks just crisp. It looks, uh, I don't know, is contemporary the word? I think I've spoiled you, man. I think that's only the case here. I think it's gotten harder to understand what you're looking at. You go down one of these retail shelves. This is my opinion, by the way. But you go down one of these retail okay. shelves, right? And there's all these giant logos now. There's like weird like fruit splashes. And like I don't know whether it's a pre-workout, a BCAA, a protein. I mean, how do you even know what it is? Uh, okay, maybe. It, it, I think you're right. Maybe I've been a little spoiled over the years. I, I, I usually, when I... When I build packaging, I always try to just put exactly what it, you're supposed to be buying right in the front. And then the secondary thing is, is it delicious or is that not a thing? Is it a capsule? Is it an always delicious? It, it, it's always delicious. Always. Every single, Every single time. time. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, yeah maybe, you, maybe you're all right. I haven't, been in, I haven't been in any stores in a long time. I've been kind of stuck behind a desk. Kind of busy. A little busy here. A little busy. A little busy. Yeah. So, uh, let's talk about supplement effects panels. Okay. okay, so um, I remember when I met you, there was this big claim to fame behind you, right? There was this thing <laughs> called CFR 101, uh -huh. and they said he's the only person in the entire country who knows what CFR what? 101 is as a graphic designer. Now, my cocky self was like, I know what CFR 101 is. I had no idea. I'm looking it up <laughs> on, my, on my iPhone 3 at this point or whatever we had back then. I'm okay. like, what's CFR 101? Nice. And, uh, you know, I think you and I started having a conversation and I, I was all prepped to have this conversation about CFR 101. Good for you. And then you and I were talking about like music or something else. Yeah, totally we different. completely didn't even. Yeah, none of that. All right, so for everyone all. who doesn't know what it is, what is CFR 101? CFR 101 uh, are, I mean, for layman's terms, basically the federal federal guidelines for food food labeling. Okay. It tells you what to put on a label, where to put it, the size to put it. So yeah. hold on, you're telling me I can't make up my font selection. I can't use Comic Sans. <laughs> I can't. No Comic Sans, please. There's a specific size for like the line and like everything else. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. So there's specifics in how high your your uh, font or how tall your font has to be in between each line on your supplement facts panel versus your ingredients, uh, et cetera, et cetera. How exactly where your your product name can go, your product identifiers, your your weights, et cetera, et cetera, on the front of the label. They're very, they're very specific about what they want. And I don't think anyone in the industry is really held to it as, as stringently as, like, food is. Like, right. we're not Post or General Mills making cereal boxes 
but we do make cereal protein though. We do make some delicious cereal protein. Mm, you know, that's just a hint. Um, but uh, yeah, so we it's it's a lot to think about when you're doing that. Fortunately, here we have a kick butt uh, regulatory team that keeps us in check as well. Those people, I don't even want to know what they talk about in their offices. <laughs> They probably talk about the same thing we talk. I about. know, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe that this protein brand is doing X, Y, and Z? I know, right? Oh man! No, I remember you introduced me to CFR one hundred and one, and I was confused. I'm like, uh, I think my fonts are fine. They match the exact same thing that I went to GNC uh, yeah. because you know that's how a brand starts, right? My brand was starting at that time. I walked into a GNC. Yep. Having never done a package design in my life, right? I went and picked up a bottle. And I'm like, all right, I could copy this. Right, I, yeah, line for line, Never. font size, everything. No. It's it's amazing how many bottles on the shelf aren't in, aren't even close to being in compliance. But you know, I think I think the FDA. I mean, don't quote me here. I am not the FDA, but thank thank God. I don't think I know, thanks God. Every right, day. they. I I think they. They're not overly concerned as long as you can read it. If you can look with your two eyes and read the packaging, understand what it is, they're pretty much going to let you go. I've, I've been through a few audits, and they've never had a word a word to say about my packaging. So, Yeah, well, you know what you're doing. You're <laughs> packaging, right? Yeah, maybe. So, okay, uh, the SEC office. I've been here for about a year now. Yeah, right? yeah and a little more. There is some serious talent walking around the building, and that just happens to be our next topic. So oh. I know you've been. Wow, what a segue! You've been in the industry for what fifteen some years, yeah. right? And uh, I tell this to everyone. I think Mike is better than me. You're hearing this right? Better than me at Adobe, right? I don't think there's many people in the world that are better than me at graphic designing. And for those of you that know me, I'm, I'm pretty cocky when it comes to my <laughs> Photoshop skills. Yeah, right? he's got some Photoshop skills. Now, I mean, seeing you work Illustrator and seeing you work Photoshop, man, you have some talented, talented people. Well, that, uh, thank you. Should you I like dab now or something? Do you know how to dab? Uh, not really. I'm old as hell. Okay. My daughter makes fun of me all the time. Here, honey. Oh, I can't wait for her to see this. <laughs> <laughs> me too. So let's talk about some of the other talent in the building. I mean, you've been here longer than me, right? Yeah. And then you were at Reaction, where some mm -hmm. of the guys here are from Reaction. Right. So let's talk about that. Um, I mean, there's Joe Shulo, yeah. right, who it's happens to be your brother. He's our chief operator. He's been officer. in the industry for uh, quite a few years himself. Yeah, he's, he's been doing it since he was a little kid yeah yeah he's he's always been really interested in bodybuilding he's he's in great shape and uh is this the part where we flash a picture of him across the yeah the screen? Pre, yeah at this point cut to picture but uh he's such a smart dude man he, he uh he's really really good at looking at a problem and identifying that problem and coming up with a solution it's almost hand in hand he can do it almost instantly and then following through and creating the solution like oh here it is done, done. he's very hard working very hard working smart dude i think what's so exciting about joe is that when he sees a problem he tries to think of it in a logical yep. like a coding format of Correct. how he could just like get a workaround going yeah, yeah. and so one thing that's always special about cc is we have software yeah yeah that most people don't have right yeah joe over the years man he he was able to with when cfr 111 happened i remember the fda came in and went here's this book you got to have that done by the next time we show up. It was like, you know. No big deal. Uh, right? like, yeah, no big deal. This thing's like 12 inches thick and all these rules and regulations. I mean, seriously, prior to 2007, I believe it was, it was the wild, wild west. You could do anything you wanted. And then they dropped all these rules and regs and separated the men from the boys. And Joe took the bull by the horns and he was like, oh, my God, this is going to be crazy. And he developed homegrown software. And Visual Basic and and uh, ASP and <laughs> used, believe it or not, um, our accounting software and had them talk to each other and created this whole system for our manufacturing process. Oh, man. Standard operating pr procedures all the way through to the other side where you're signing books and sending it out the front door. Unbelievable. Uh, SOP is it's another acronym. Most people don't know what it yeah. stands for. Uh, okay, your turn. Name, name another member of staff. Dan Will Trout. Dan Will Trout. Yeah. Uh, he's the first person I met at Reaction. Yeah. This boy lives and breathes sports nutrition. Oh, yeah, yeah. I right. met Dan as a uh, right out of college, man. He was a 
bright-eyed, bushy-tailed young man came into ATF Fitness Products, believe it or not. Okay. And that's when I knew he was good people. <laughs> <laughs> I remember Dan looked at my product and was like, oh, I think I need Mike to take a look at this label. <laughs> and I'm like, what do you mean? My label's fine. Yeah. You didn't actually have that many. Believe it or not, man, your labels weren't that bad off. I was really good at copying you were pretty other people's <laughs> labels. <laughs> yeah, you were pretty good at copying other people's stuff. No, but you did a good job. I mean, we've seen some... We've seen some, we'll call them efforts over the years. So Dan's our VP of contract manufacturing. Right, right, yeah. And uh, if you had to just list off a couple of his like big accolades, what do you think they'd be? So what? besides Dan being a personable guy, you know, easy to get along with, and he's like fun to be around, um, Dan understands ingredients. So if you're a customer and you're calling a contract manufacturer to have something made, right? Yeah. Dan has the ability to understand what's going in the bottle instead of just going, yeah, 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 cool. Yeah. We'll just put the, dump it in and put the stuff and wrap it around and stuff, put the lid on. Goodbye. No, Dan understands every, every, everything, every aspect of it, you know? So <laughs> basically if I ever need to know what the heck something is, I'm like, uh, buddy, what is this? But you know, he's, he's, he's hard to find. Oh, definitely. In this industry. Especially, I mean, a lot of people understand what BCAAs are and what protein is and, you know, the different types of protein. If it's, well, I'm going to stop you there. A lot of people think they know what BCAAs are <laughs> okay. and where they come from. Good point. And protein and so on and so forth, right? Yeah. But, um, no, I mean, Dan uses himself as a guinea pig. Yeah. <laughs> right? And we have some stories for days about stuff that Dan has done over the years. If, uh, if you guys ever get a chance to talk to Dan, ask him about niacin. I don't even want to know this story. All right, so uh, let's move on to the next person. Let's talk about Jaime Tavares. Jaime. Oh, Jaime is a uh, is our uh, VP of international sales. That's right. Yeah, he is. Uh, he's. I've only met him a few times because he's he lives in Florida and he travels all the country all the time. Right. But uh, I have worked with him on occasion when I have to work with international customers. And they're translators to get the labels done for uh, other governments' FDAs. Uh, one of the greatest, one of the craziest ones we ever did was one over in um, Indonesia. Okay. Oh my God! It took almost a year. Jeez. It was crazy that that the, they are in no hurry to get back to you on revisions. Let me tell you. Wait, wait. So for the record, you're saying our government might be a little bit faster. Our than government. Everyone? is tremendously faster okay. than these other governments. So Jaime we got from uh, his historical backgrounds from GNC, right? He yeah. spent 25 years That's right. in the industry working with different international companies and business owners all across the world. That's right. And uh, you know, if you're from an international country, he's the go-to person at SDC, right? And yeah. he's the one that's going to be talking to you about the regulation knowledge that he has. He works with our regulatory team to help you know get products registered in different countries, mm -hmm. and obviously he communicates and translates to our production staff in language that you know we understand yep. to make sure that we can get those products made and yes. distributed into these countries. Yeah, it's a lot. It's crazy. It's crazy. All right. Yeah, I don't even understand half the stuff that comes in. I'm just like, cool, whatever you said, dude. <laughs> Speaking of what come from GNC, can you think of anyone else that we pulled from GNC? In the building. In the building. GNC, GNC, GNC. Controls all the oh, money. Oh, <laughs> Patrick Fortune. Patrick Fortune. Our CFO. Yeah, what, a, what a name. The yeah. Patrick Fortune. Is that not the perfect name for controlling the money? It's amazing. Pat Fortune. You know, Pat is a great, great guy. Yeah. You know, you'd think that you'd butt heads with him when no. you first think of the finance guy. No, but he he understands the Very dry the humor. He'll hit a he'll hit you with a grenade sometimes and walk out of the room and then it goes off and you're like oh ha, ha, ha. usually it's about me and uh, you know money <laughs> that I may have owed from of SDC people. at some point <laughs> but uh, I, I think I think coming to SDC the craziest thing I learned was that if I don't have movie knowledge and the mm -hmm. ability to quote movies oh, yeah, yeah, from yeah. the past three decades oh, yeah. that I'm gonna be totally out of the loop yeah there's a list that you have to watch to fit in in culture around here yeah, yeah it's you know it's serious it's it's pretty serious man well pat's the man yeah uh, he came from gnc as well right so sure this guy has a tremendous background in accounting controlling funds ensuring that businesses even know what they're doing right last thing with across the board right now speaking from experience right i've been in the industry for eight years and i mean finding people that know the ins and outs 
of this industry and understanding how to account for everything, both accounts receivable, accounts payable, yeah. understanding terms. I mean, it's incredible with what that man's been able to do here at SEC in his time. Hell yeah. Smart decisions. Before, before Pat was another really inspirational guy. Did you ever get a chance to meet Ray Boyer? Yeah, sure did. Ray Boyer is one of the one of the f- first guys I met from SEC when I first yeah. got, needed to get my pro team. When Reaction was like, hey, you need to go to SEC to make your pro team. Yeah, he just looks like he means business, right? That man means business. Uh, for real, right? Possible. I know Ray's listening at home, so I had to <laughs> drop his name in on the podcast. <laughs> hey, Ray. Um, all right, so let's name someone else. Uh, we have the head of quality here, Jennifer McCurry. Yeah. I lean on her a lot. I bet. Oh, yeah. I can't tell you how many times I'm like, she'll just be walking past my desk to go pick up a, you know, whatever off the printer. And I'm like, hey, hey Jen. Hey, Jen. I got something for you. You know, and she is able to take, you know, so a lot of times there's a gray area or something like that. Someone's asking to put something on the label. And she's able to kind of weigh out what the options should be and give me the best you know, the best scenario for, you know, what makes sense and what doesn't make sense. So <laughs> I definitely appreciate her a lot. I, I think my first memory of her here at SEC was, mm-hmm. uh, hey, guys, we're going to have uh, so-and-so come by to, you know, do an inspection of the facility today. Yeah. I'm like, wait, what? I thought we just had someone do an inspection two days ago. And then I find out how many times people come here to audit oh, the facility. Oh, yeah. That's a lot. And how she manages, you know, soup to nuts, everything that yes. goes into one of these audits. I was impressed. I was like, wow. And not to mention that, she does a lot of the work with getting certifications here, like a, like a halal and our kosher certification. Those are, <laughs> there's a lot more than just signing a paper there and writing a check or getting, you know what I mean. It's it's it It's a serious amount of work. Yeah, so speaking of certifications, I mean... I'm sure you could think of a couple of manufacturers that don't even have any certifications, right? Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I think it's incredible, right? When you look around the industry and you find manufacturers are like touting, like, hey, we're going to beat anyone's price. Yeah. Right. But then you go ask them about the certifications, like, uh, we don't have any. Yeah. There's a lot more than just CGMP. Right. And, you know, let's get it, let's put it on the table. There's no such thing as CGMP certified. What do you mean? Yeah. Tell me more. <laughs> it's just the way. You either do it that way or don't do it. There's not like a certification they give you with a medal like, oh, look what we did. Well, I think there's um, there's groups you could come in to audit you. Sure. Right? Yeah. And be like, you know, this facility or this entity is, uh, you know, has they're doing the it the right way. Right. But, you know, it isn't like the FDA comes in and like puts a gives everybody a medal and, you know, in a ring of honor. It's just. Hey man, you have to do it this way or don't do it at all. And then you're right. There's a lot of companies or, or um, there's a lot of affili- participation certificates. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's no, no one's getting that. those participation <laughs> trophies for this. Yeah, yeah. You know, they come in and they they can say they audit to see whether you're. Am I doing this right? Yes, you are. Or no, I'm not. You need to change these things. And we've gone through tons of those, and it it shows because I'm telling you, man. I hear some horror stories out there. As a graphic designer, I'm sure you can imagine that I do a lot of work for a lot of people and we there's people that manufacture outside of here so let's talk about labels because we're jumping into that topic all right why can't i put uh cgmp or fda or nsf or any of these logos on a label well you can put cgmp on a label okay just meaning that you know this was manufactured in a facility that uses you know good manufacturing processes um fda no they don't want their logo on your label because it makes the the consumer believe that you have some sort of certification from them, which doesn't exist. So I've been through this in the past where we used to put, this is way back, we'd put, you know, cert, uh, manufactured in a facility that's been specced by the FDA with a little FDA logo on there, a little all official. Right. And they were like, yeah, yeah, take that off. I was like, why? It doesn't, they're like, they? yeah, yeah, the FDA. The like FDA. from the oh, horse's man. mouth. I'm like, oh, okay, cool, take it right off for you, ma'am. So that happened. So... I usually try to steer customers away from that. And the other one is like the NSF. Now, you can use that, but I believe there is... Um, wait, am I wrong on that? Yeah, so... Uh, I can't I don't know if you remember this, right? We put up this video with the NSF logo. Oh, yeah. And someone yeah. from NSF called me immediately. And they're like, uh, you know, guys, you can't. <laughs> you can't spin our logo yeah. in 3D or yeah, yeah. do any of this cool <laughs> stuff that you just did that with it. That was so cool. I thought they were going to pay... Wasn't the, there like lightning on there? I thought they were going to pay us to buy the video. I know, nope, right? I was so wrong. Mm-hmm. So... 
uh, there's such a thing as NSF Sport certified, and um, I think there's a couple other ver- versions like that. And you have to pay to That's have it. your product go through the approval process to be um, you know, allowed to use that logo. But, uh, I mean, we are able to use the logo that you see on uh, the backdrop behind you pretty much because the facility itself has yeah. certification. And, you know, w- this is actually the new 2019 approved version of what we're doing here. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's crazy. People don't understand how these logos work on label packaging. And uh, I remember when we started designing for my previous brand, uh, I wanted to put all sorts of crazy claims on these labels, right? I yeah. wanted to say... Uh, oh, Yeah. Yeah, you remember seeing some of these, man. <laughs> we'll increase testosterone by 400% in three seconds. Go! And you were like, uh, man, you can't say any of that. Nope. And I was like, oh, darn. All right, so then we're just going to call the product test, right? And just tell people that this is what it does just by in the product you name. You can't. Yeah, it's it's crazy. But, uh, you know, w- from a design aspect, I think we've found a way to get around that. Yeah, shh, we're not going to talk about that, though. Picture says it. All right, let me ask you right. a uh, important question. So the, after our last episode, being this is episode two, a lot of people came back to us, and I got two pieces of feedback. Okay. Okay. One is, uh, dude, we don't like the cold question and answer setting. So we like they're probably going to like this better, right? Us talking across from each other and us going from topic to topic. Here, bro, hold my beer. <laughs> uh, no, here, bro, hold my protein shake. <laughs> um, That's a little more apropos. The second thing is uh, people want more advice right. on how to improve their brand. Right. Okay. They know that I've had, you know, my tenure of doing over you know, hundred million in direct to consumer and people have been asking all sorts of questions, you know, like what can we do to, to be better or stronger? Right. Now you've had 15 years in the industry in graphic design, label making, uh, branding, packaging. I mean, you name it, right. Social media, everything. What are really important pieces of advice you would give a brand when it comes to getting ahead in 2019? Man, I'll tell you what, I've seen a lot of brands blow up over the years and honestly cool packaging yeah like the cooler the better what what is is cool packaging well i remember a while back a certain brand had a metal container okay i'm not going to name names you could name the brand cellucor okay oh yeah man that cellucor container when that happened every store had to have cellucor it was crazy. It was ridiculous. They explode. I mean, look where they are now. You remember, you, know? you remember Teen Mutant Ninja Turtles when they had that little like vial? Yeah. That's what I thought yeah. it was when I first saw them. Like, yeah, oh it was God, crazy, crazy, right? It was yeah. awesome. You know, and so on and so forth. I mean, BSN was the first one to have that hollow prismatic like oh, that. That's that, right. Yeah. That metallic hologram material. And then everybody did it. You know, monkey see, monkey do. Um I know you, there's some companies now that are doing a really good job too, and, and it's just a matter of finding something that's different that can connect with an audience. I think a lot of a lot of places try to make uh, make the mistake of trying to sell to oh we're going to sell to everybody. Yeah, no one's selling to everybody unless you're Nike. You know what I mean? And or Apple. You know, it, this is dietary supplements. You need to find, you need to hone that in, and then once you have that you can direct to that audience and they'll feel like they're more of a part of you. And then, you know, from a social media and marketing aspect, I just think it's a matter of creating content that's original. Like you can't shutter stock this. You need to create okay. original content that when you post it, uh, you know, the end user or the, the, the consumers on there and they're like, Oh man, this is really cool. You know, and and not be over sales pitchy. Oh my God, uh, you know what I mean? Like, you're telling here, me consumers don't want to be pitched. No, every five seconds they as do they not want to. They don't. Here's your plaid jacket in the car. You know, we're just working out these Rocktober deals, buddy. <laughs> you know what I mean? None of that stuff. Let's just keep it simple, and and you'll win. 